It's September the 22nd. We're finally getting a harvest. Believe it or not, we got beans. We planted these when? Uh, third week in July? Yeah. <laughs> third week in July, and we're getting beans. And the only reason we're harvesting, as they say, is supposed to snow tonight. It's supposed to snow tonight. <laughs> but we got dill, we got beans, and here, have a peek here. Look at the size of that one. Two months. Whoa. Supposed to be 68. Aren't we the day. farmers? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got something. Good job, Dan. Better to have tried and failed than not to have tried at all. Settler moto. That's our moto here. Forecast for Winnipeg City. Frost warning issued. Low minus one to plus two with patchy frost. For Friday, it's September 15th. The morning after the first serious frost, Tim and Frank head out to the south pasture to get the final verdict on the barley crop. We weren't really worried about the frost killing anything. After we planted, we realized that our crop wasn't going to be as good as we had expected because we just kept getting more rain and more rain. Too wet. And planted too late, mostly too. Yeah, and not enough. A month uh, and a half too late. Not enough sunshine. You see the whole area, but because there was so much water, that was a low area down there, so most of the seeds washed down there. So you'll find we have clumps that actually came up, but it, it hasn't come up good because it came up in water. And this is all the seeds, and all that it is is just rotten. You can see they're just rotten. Totally rotten. Deanna, what have you got there? <laughs> Our carrot. <laughs> These carrots, what we had planted them twice now? Twice? Three times. Three times. It, uh, we had been drowned out two times. And so these carrots have been planted three times, and this is what we've gotten. We have, what, half a dozen tomatoes that we might get? That's all we'll get. We won't have any root vegetables. We just have to rely on any canning we've done, and then just use our money, um, some of our $500, to order food. And we figured it out, and we figure if nothing goes wrong, um, getting groceries and getting feed for our animals. By the end of June, we should be left with maybe $10. And oh, that's what nothing, that, nothing that. else happens. And you know, we could have a wagon break, we could have something happen to one of our animals. Um, that's no extra ammunition, anything. It's gonna be a tight winter. Really Very tight. tight. Yeah. And that's why, we're, that's why we're going to work at the neighbors right now. In spite of the crop failure, the pioneers are determined to survive the winter as true homesteaders. Tim and Deanna head to the New Haven Hutterite colony to barter their labor for food. This was a common practice in settler times. During the first hungry winters, someone would have to leave the homestead and find work to support the family. Well, these are layers, do you know that? Actually, there's quite a few eggs inside. It's okay, Jeff, it's okay. And they actually keep these eggs. They are, these are just the yolks. The white hasn't formed yet. And they actually keep them and use them for making noodles. Today, the Treadways are processing chickens because the bush camps and railway gangs of the 1870s are long gone. Still, there are some pioneer traditions here, found in these hymns, sung for pleasure by people who share a reverence for the old ways. I'm deep breathing. <laughs> My parents are coming. My We're brother and sister. A baby. Yeah. We're yeah. really excited. Oh, yeah? We're counting the sleeps, and that's pretty sad. Frank's like, how many sleeps left, Lana? That'd be like four, three. It's pretty sad. I never thought I'd be this excited. <laughs> it's Frank and Alana's turn for some family visits. They won't see their parents again until next year. It's a chance for this young couple to show off what they've accomplished. All your makeup. Oh. And Frank did the chicken coop the week we were by ourselves because the chickens were half dying and they're they're in these little cages. And a chance that. for their parents to marvel and take pride. Tons of them. Because we're in a swamp, Mom. <laughs> I was just so curious to see how things were, and when we first saw the first cabin when it came around the corner, it just looked so much better than what I thought it would look like. 
Uh, and then coming back here and seeing Frank and Alana's, I really uh, impressed the way they built the cabins. But going over there to where they lived for so many weeks in a tent, I just can't believe how they survived in those conditions. Walking through that field with the ruts and, the, and it's sopping wet now. I think if I had had to live in a tent with a, for seven weeks with a couple that I don't know, I think there would have been serious problems. I don't think I could have done it. Frank is living his father's dream. Jim Logie has a passion for Canada's pioneer history, and he's arrived in his own costume, hoping to share a corner of his son's adventure. Oh, too much slack. Wasn't very controllable. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carol Logie will leave her daughter-in-law with the survival skill for the long, cold winter. It's going to be a monotonous winter, I tell you. Knitting and quilting, I tell you, life's gone downhill. Now you're going to learn how to purl. <laughs> that was a knit stitch. Let's go for a beer for a second. <laughs> this is just a little something I, was, I made in an afternoon, you know. I had nothing to do, so... Is it for me? Yes, for you. Too soon, oh it's like time to go. Jim Logie has made something to leave with Alana. Oh, my goodness. So it's a period knife. Yes. It is. Oh. Yes. It's amazing, and you even put the Logie symbol on it. Uh, yeah, that's right. Pioneer Quest. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> that's so nice. Thank it's you. Nice. It's exciting. I know he spends so much time with them, and he's amazing at making them. Thank it's you, It's a keepsake. Yes, yes. Must well, be used. It will be used. OK. All right. Bye, Bye. Don't worry about us. OK. I'm not going to worry. Now, Frank and Alana face five months of winter away from the care and support of their families. Like the young dreamers who spent their first Christmas here 130 years ago, they will have to rely on their wits and each other. I know I uh, was here in Manitoba many years ago in the wintertime and uh, it's cold and it's windy. <sighs> Hopefully, they come out in the springtime in real good shape. And they will be stronger. Yes. They will be stronger inside as well as outside. Yes. They are in great physical shape, but mentally, this has made them both stronger as a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Don't miss us. Just carry on. Yeah, you too. Okay. It's not that long. I know. It's really hitting me how long we're here for. For a while there, it was going by really quick, and I think now that it's slowing down, it's starting to scare me. I think it's going really slow now, or it's starting to go slower, and this is a long time we're here for. And it's like, wow, we've you know, got the winter coming up, which is going to be long and cold and pretty boring. And so it's feeling more like a long haul, so I'm missing some of the... It seems like we've, we've been here forever, and we've only been here three and a half months, so we're only just past a quarter away. So I feel like I'll be 50 when I leave. Or, I mean, yeah. it's just forever away. Yeah, yeah. The family visits are over. Time to get back to work, because the signs are everywhere that winter is just around the corner. Check this ice out, our first morning with ice. Oh. If we do it real quick, we can put it in a glass and have some ice water this morning. Mmm. We're getting there. How important is this wood? Oh, super. Really important. We had fires going, and it's down to, I don't know, well, the ponds are freezing. And we had, uh, we put in just wood in our stove and, and put the damper down, and we had lots of coals this morning with the oak. But with the poplar and stuff, there's nothing left in the morning. Oh, this is a good log. It's good and solid, and what would it be, about a nine inch log there. And that'll last, a uh, 16 inch piece will last all night which is very important. The pioneers have lucked out. A neighbor wants a stand of dead oak cut down and taken away. But it's a long haul back to the homestead. It never ceases to amaze me how long everything takes to do. You think you're gonna make five loads of firewood in a day, you only make one. 
you know, you, if you looked at a ruler and you said, well, I've got 12 inches of time left, we've got about uh, 20 inches of work left. <laughs> so we've got about three weeks of hopeful good weather. The snow right now would be a, an interesting twist with the wagon because we were told by the old timers that the steel wheels attract the snow and then as you clunk along the road a chunk of the snow will fall off the wheel and then it becomes a real rough ride and, and that's where the wheels start to fall apart and the spokes break so the snow right now would be very interesting we don't have uh, any other means of transportation other than climbing on a horse's back Mushrooms so far? Check these out. We'll get you guys to eat them first in case they're poisonous. Yeah, in case they're poisonous. <laughs> and then we get the new insurance. Yeah. We're all hooked up oh, now. Oh, wait three months. Wait three months. 250000 each. Yeah. <laughs> we decided to build our barn here for the cow and chickens. That's the chicken door. This is the cow door, and this our door. Where the cow will be. This is the low end, and she'll we'll build a little platform here out of uh, poplar. She'll stand on, and she'll dump there. And the urine, commonly called cow pee, will go that way. And the cow manure will go that way, out the door and out. We're supposed to get snow tonight, so we wanted to try and get the chickens in today into here because they're still outside and we're worried about them getting way too cold. So we want to get this done today. We're not sure if we'll get the chickens in because the guys have to get the rest of the straw in today. So we're kind of pressed for time now that it's getting cold so quick and we're worried about getting everything done in time. We had thought about doing a barn with the horses in as well, but then we thought they'd be outside all day and then there'd be all that open space so the cow and the chickens would probably be way too cold. So we've got a tiny, tiny barn here, but it should be good for the two of them. And we're hoping so. Everyone we asked, nobody really knew, and so we're doing the best we can, and we hope they'll be okay in here. Are you feeling the pressure of winter? Definitely, yeah. Especially the last couple of days it's gotten cold. And Frank and I still have about a wall and a half on our house to reach Hink. And it's moss that we need from the swamp, so it's a really cool job to do. Your hands are freezing, and it's hard to do with gloves on. And um, I was a bit worried about the moss freezing you know, all the water around it in the swamp, and then I wouldn't be able to get the good moss for the house. So yeah, I want to have everything chinked this week, which is a big pressure, and the straw has to be done now before it snows, and we haven't really started cutting any wood yet, so we've got a lot to do all of a sudden, and we figure we've got four weeks at the most to finish it all up, so the pressure's on. Well, we're doing the roof of the barn, so uh, we'll put a layer of straw first. I don't know if this is going to stay on. It's, yeah, it's sliding right off. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just trying to help. Why don't we tack it on on this side here, on this side? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. You yeah. guys are behind schedule on your straw, so hurry it up. Can't move with them, can't move with them. Okay, girls, the women. second one, women, women of the, the world, way, so pull it this way. way, the second one. The second or the first? The second one. But part of second, don't you understand? It's second. I'm right on the yeah. edge. No, okay, that's good. The... I think the tar tar paper is going to make all our straw fall off. Yeah, I think, and then a wind's going to come, and we're going to have nothing but a few pieces of tar paper oh, left. That's right. The pioneers are improvising with the materials they have because the crop failure has left them on a tight budget. They need to protect what's left of their livestock. That means working out a roof that's simple, watertight, and warm for Daisy and the chickens. With the other one, you would have got that extra foot, though. But it would have only been eight feet wide. So you have all so the work to go. Why don't you guys quit nagging and get to work? <laughs> Teamwork, but not working um, together. More than one. Oh, that's right. How many you want? Um, all of them. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Stop. 
<laughs> we can't do straw without the women. We need them. We desperately need the women. We need some weight to pack the straw. Yeah, I was just going to say they want our weight to pack the straw. We need weight to pack the straw now, so. And we've both lost so much weight. Your image is we going just down can't down. pack it. <laughs> non traditional woman backseat. <laughs> Wait, Elena, you can do the non traditional thing. You can drive the men there. All right. Hold on. Hold on to your pants, I tell you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. 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 Elena, you should, you should scroll oh, down to the corner. Whoa. Whoa. No, 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 whoa. Don't say whoa. You're the one saying the whoa. What? What? Whoa. 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 Probably wasn't her fault, Mo. No. No, the insurance company for the fourth time in a row. This, I'm not sure, but I don't know why these things keep jumping out at people like this. <laughs> I'm really, really afraid. Deer hunting season has opened, and Tim is anxious to get started. But the pioneers must follow modern hunting rules, which means using only a bow for now. They'll have to wait another three weeks before they can start using their black powder rifles. There's plenty of deer tracks around, but the pioneers are finding it's next to impossible to get close enough for a killing shot with the bow. Usually about this time at night, they. Uh come out of the bushes from the far side. When they come, they come across here. I, when they put their head down, I just step down in here like this. And then I just watch their heads. And when their heads come across, by the time they're here, they're past me so they don't see me because they're looking ahead. And I can just step up. been a lot of deer going by here. But they're laughing at me now because I miss them. I enjoy it. I just like being out in the bush with them and having the deer come so close. I mean, we're only looking at 30 feet. It's a beautiful night tonight, too. Beautiful night. Well, we were out hunting tonight. Got nothing. <laughs> well, they say after uh, three strikes you're out, and I shot at three deer in the past hunting season, and I have missed three deer. I have seen probably close to 70 deer this past week, but no meat. I went deer hunting, and there was no deer. None. I had my chances, and I blew them. Now I'll live. go hungry, damaged. Bow hunting takes skill, luck, and patience. Plenty of patience. And that's tough, because the pressure's on to find a deer. It's the pioneer's last chance to harvest some food from the land. Autumn has turned out to be Mother Nature's consolation prize, given to the pioneers for enduring a miserable summer. Evenings like this have always been one of the simple rewards of a life on the prairie, best sampled in silence and then stowed away in memory. Well, it's about too dark to do any more hunting tonight. You can still see the shoot, but 
if you end up wounding one, it's going to take off in the bush, and I'm not going to be able to track it in the dark. I don't want to do that anyway. Chance losing it or something, so I'll have to come back another night. You know, it's been like three weeks we've been going, but we just have to keep at it, keep going, and hopefully we'll get something soon. But it was funny because I was thinking today too, though, what a roller coaster we're on out here. Do you need the milk? Like we've been in a little high lately because the weather's nice and I love the fall. But we've had really crappy times too. It just seems out here it's off from one extreme to the other. We had the most rain in Manitoba in years. We had the most bugs in Manitoba in years. We've had the warmest fall in Manitoba in years. I think we have to have the most snow in the coldest winter. I think in years. Yeah, I know. I, I said it's got to be the worst winter. I'm going to be disappointed if we have a really nice winter. I, Frank, don't even say it. It's true, though. That's a jinx. That's <laughs> oh, <what> no. <laughs> then you get out there and start cutting wood. <laughs> Why are you guys doing this in the dark? Because it's cool. It's getting dark so early. We're not tired yet. We used to work in the summertime. We worked till 8 or 9 o'clock and it was light. Well, no, we were in the tent because of the bugs, but... But actually, we find if we go in now, it's so dark, you feel like it's later. You start getting tired and want to go to bed till nine, at 9, so it's kind of a waste. Well, what I'm doing today is making a... Uh, uh, we're going to have chicken noodle soup today. So I'm making the noodles. So, uh... It's taken me like two hours so far. I've uh, made the actual pass itself with flour and eggs. And now I've been cutting the spaghetti by hand. I don't know if you can see, my neck is uh, kind of swollen. I got uh, poison ivy on my face and my neck. Hey, what else was itchy? <laughs> well, let's just put it this way. If you get poison ivy on your hands and then attempt to go pee, hold your boys. <laughs> things happen. And you can start to get itchy down there too. We're calling them scratchy. And uh, T went and picked up some plantain leaves. So then that night, Frank's sitting there and he wraps his little penis all in the leaves. <laughs> on it. It looked like some hors d'oeuvre from some weird culture or something. It was too funny. Here he was in pain and I've never laughed so hard for so long. I'd get up a night with him and, and we'd try and ease the pain with some, I don't know, washcloth or something. Anyway, it was too funny. She just kept laughing at me over and over again. I, the pain I was going through was unbearable. And then he was so worried about it being headlines. Settler gets poison ivy in private parts or something. Poor Frankie. It's all healed, though. <laughs> in the first week of October, Wisdom arrives in a horse-drawn cart. It's Max Smith, a neighbor and a true pioneer. He's in poor health now, but he has crisp memories of the early days when he farmed with horses, just as the pioneers are now. Yeah, have fun so grab a hold of your missus. <laughs> Oh, it's good to yeah, see you again. It's good to see you too. Yeah, another neighbor by Goom. Hey, oh, how are you doing, Lana? Good. That's a good. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got a, a straw roof, eh? Yeah. I lived on a farm down there by Stonewall. Well, the Stonewall had log barns on it. They were good. This is the first building I've seen with the logs up and down. I have lots of memories of log buildings but they're all laid the other way. And I think this is the best way to do it. So you may get by good on what you got. This is important. It's important for us as, uh, I think I can say an ignorant settler, to have uh, an old timer come and say that we're doing something right. Making these big jacks out of business, you know that? Yeah. Well, let's take it right off and see how the... Just see how dry it is. The pioneers seek Mac's advice on maintaining the wagon. They use it almost every day, and if they overheat an axle, they'll be in trouble. And this old grease is the old stuff they used to use on, on wagon wheels. Yeah. Years and years ago, they used axle grease because that's a heavy wheel, and it had heavy loads hauling grain, gravel, and whatnot, 
In the old days, if you had to have grease, it would stay with it. And of course, uh, you know, we were still talking homesteader talk when I was a kid. There was lots of hardships. Yeah, it was cold, cold winters, and much colder than we have now. I'm sure they had hardships, and they'd leave to go to Winnipeg with a team of horses, and they'd uh, sometimes make it in one day because they'd get up in the middle of the night and start it out. Uh, maybe take a quart of wood in or something to sell to get money, stuff like this. Uh. So, you know, that's the kind of days they lived through, eh? Mm. Pretty hard, you know. Bye, you ladies. See you. Bye, Mac. Thanks for coming by. Uh, we'll we'll see you. Thanks, Stuart. See you yeah. sometime. I not, probably won't be back again this before spring. Well, maybe we'll blanket you up and get you in here. <laughs> bye bye. Such a voice of authority. Now that I've been out here, it's funny. I don't know why so much more I want people to know what everyone went through. And it is amazing what so many of these people did, and nobody knows. And he said, you know, young people now go get a job and everything's too easy, and it's true. It is. Like, as much as our life is more stressful with modern technology in certain ways, you know, cell phones and computers, we are so spoiled mm -hmm. and don't go through any physical hardships that these people did. And Thank goodness we're four people that like to work. Well, is Frank it... and I were even talking the other night, and we said if we had a little baby here, let's say a couple kids, and it was Frank and I and nobody else, there is no way. I can't imagine doing it. Like Frank said, we would be going to bed probably at, at 1 in the morning and getting up at 4 in the morning to start again. And you'd be so exhausted, you, you'd be a robot. Like, I, you'd only do it because you'd starve if you wouldn't. We are tired I, I as it is. Yeah, <laughs> right. like, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, yeah. But it has been very, there's some really wonderful things, I think, coming out of this for us as a couple. I'm sure for you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this honeymoon you're on. <laughs> <laughs> Two years, we're not honeymooning anymore. They're always to bed. They, they leave right after supper in. Man, what? No, we do not. No life at all with us. And here we want to play cards and we want to, you know. When's the last time you asked us to play cards? <laughs> Tim's in hunting season, so he's attacking you. <laughs> there is something about this hunting season. We have to he play does. that. I've never seen him all over her, and he has been the past three weeks. I think something yeah. happens in hunting season. <laughs> something with the hormones. It's a man instinct. <laughs> Frank's hunting all year round. <laughs> No, this will be fine. Yeah, yeah, this is already stinky. I'm going this morning over to, I'm going this morning over to uh, a neighbor's place. His dad, he, he, he's a dairy farmer, and his dad, who usually helps him, is in the hospital right now, so I'm going over and uh, helping him, uh, I'm feeding the cows for him in the morning. I'm helping a neighbor out and I'm feeding his cows, which I think is something so period appropriate. He really needs the help, and I can help him, but the way I'm, feeding the cows is, I don't think, exactly 1875 way, which is something I have, a, I have a problem with, but he really needs the help, and I can help him, so I think that it's something I should, should do anyway. Simpler, that's for sure. It's a little bit different than feeding Daisy. They feed the, the 40 cows and they eat like 5,000 pounds worth of food every day. There's like six or seven different things you mix together. It's not like the old way, you just feed them one thing, barley or corn or something, and that was it. These guys found out on a Sunday that my dad had a heart attack and I've got a bit of a back problem right now and these guys just, they were on their way to visit some other people and they just said that was it, they're coming to help us and they did. And uh, you don't get much better neighbors than that. I think he's in a lot of pain this morning. He gets uh, so sore so he can't milk cows then I'm not sure what we'll do. It's nice that he's got some help. <coughs> he, um, he farms a lot with horses. So we've used his horse knowledge so many times. He's been over teaching us and helping us with our horses. And right from the very first day, helping us with our plow. So um, yeah, we've needed him while we've been here. The past and the present blur together in this modern dairy barn. 
Lindsay Hamill uses Percheron horses for a lot of the farm chores. This is a golden opportunity for Tim to pick up some pointers from an expert horseman. Are you alive still? <laughs> Hold the bit with your hand, stick your thumb in his mouth, and push on his gum, and he'll open his mouth just on like the bottom that. gum? And up on the top. Manure is collected by a mechanical barn cleaner. It's Tim's job to haul it away. The Hamels say they save thousands on fuel and repair bills using horses instead of tractors. Meanwhile, Frank and Tim are discovering that farming has stayed a very tough way to make a living. I don't think I could be a dairy farmer. Every day you have to be there. Crack a dawn, you're shoveling cow manure till Every day, 365 days a year, just ties you down. Uh, the um, the moss is uh, we've been having problems with the moss falling out, especially because you're trying to push it on one side and then push it on the other. So just putting willow up to hold the moss in, and then when we take the moss on the other side and squish it through, it'll compact it more and it'll have something to press against. So we'll be able to get more moss in there. And in some of the parts of the house, we've also uh, willowed on the inside, so we squished in between the two layers of willow. And uh, the warmer, the better insulated we make our house, the less wood we're going to have to cut. So that'll be uh, save us a lot more work, a lot, a lot, a lot of work in the come winter. Trying to do anything we can just to try and keep it warm inside. You know, we have no idea how cold it's going to be this winter. How, it's hard to tell even how much wood we're going to need. What are you doing? Oh. Um. Are you in there or what? So what are you doing? <laughs> Just hanging out under the bed in the bad books. <laughs> um, chinking under the bed. We foolishly rechinked after everything was built. And um, so now I gotta work around everything. And it's not too fun, but what do you mean you rechinked? Um, we were gonna stick with clay and we were gonna chink on the inside. Um, once the weather got colder, and then we decided to use moss. So now we've done most of the outside, and we've got to go back, or I've got to go back. It's a woman's job. <laughs> it doesn't take hard labor. And um, chink on the inside, so i got to put moss just kind of in it and around everything for insulation. Well, look at these pants, Alana. <laughs> Turn I do, around. I do have to fly before you go to town, too. Let me see your butt in them. What butt? <laughs> <laughs> these ones were um, tight on me when I got here. These are these snazzy um, old people dress pants. And uh, these were tight. I wasn't able to, I was barely able to get them up, uh, done up. As you can see, there's, there's a lot more room uh, now. I just pull them on, take them off. Did I have a belly out to here before? Or? I'll tell you about it one day. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably lost about 15 pounds. It was more, I think, but I gained a few back. So we'll see. After Christmas, I'll gain five again, and then by March, I should be good and skinny. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> this is my period-appropriate uh, hunting hat they got me, so that uh, no one will mistake me for a deer. Gilligan. Yes. So I'll just go out with these and my, my green hunting pants here and uh, really, really snazz up the neighborhood. You know, they had so many hunting accidents and everything over the years that they decided we have to do that. There's a lot of things that we don't, there's some things that we don't do that they did back then um, because it's not safe. Just like our stove, we have a modern stove because the stove they would have used is not safe. So that's where they've... Um, I think it's, we've kind of gone against that period appropriateness type thing to uh, go for safety instead, which uh, I don't have a problem with at all. Kim, Kim, how many deer are you bringing back tonight? Three. Three. Okay. You're sure of that? Yep. What happens if you don't? No sex. <laughs> no sex till I get a deer. Deanna. You're laughing for the next few days. <laughs> <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> well, I've got our first kill here, and I just cleaned it. And uh, 
This is all the meat we get. Finally, Frank gets lucky. And, He's uh, bagged a partridge. Hopefully this is a, a sign of luck and we're actually going to get some more stuff. I'm well, gonna... you're looking at the big warrior today. <laughs> <laughs> the partridge killer. First edible animal killed out here on the homestead. Frank tells me tonight how they mate. Because I kept hearing a thumping out here tonight. And I think it's his spouse looking for it. I feel like I could just cry. Because another one took off when I hit it. Because there was another one right there. So now just for the sake of a little piece of partridge meat about this big, that will give us like half a stir fry. Now there's some lonely partridge out there. I don't think I like this hunting idea. Forecast for Winnipeg City for today. Periods of rain. Wind north 30, gusting to 50 kilometers per hour. Temperature steady near plus three for tonight. Rain possibly mixed at times with snow. What are you guys using? This is a muzzle loader. As you can tell, we're loading from the front. So the muzzle. This is called a ball starter. And uh, we put the ball in, pack it down. And then we, um, we put in the cap, which provides the ignition of the, of the um, gunpowder. And then when we go to shoot it, we bring it right back. And then you can see there's two triggers. One trigger is the one that sets the hair trigger up front. So this is the one that actually shoots. This is the one that sets the front trigger. So. Is this a weapon, Tim, that uh, they would use me? This is the ones. Can you take the back lever back? Yep, pull it right back till you hit a little flick. Okay, now your front trigger is set on a hair trigger. The rattles over there? Yep. Depends if she's shooting there, she's not too bad, eh? She's a pretty good shot. I'd say she's pretty good. Let's see if we can go get a deer now and see how steady she is on the hand. <laughs> came out from behind the bale there. Two of them I thought, yeah, I get two in one. I ducked down under this bale here, beside this bale, and got my arm on the bale, so I had a sure, felt my sure, and put the gun right in my shoulder like that. I put the sights in, put it on the front quarter. And I missed. Winter! How's the old mags doing out here? Got their bums to the weather. Well, it's here. I just think what my dear friends are doing at home <laughs> having coffee at Tim Horton. <laughs> In a nice warm place. When the snow started to fall, what was going through your mind? Well, I heard the rain all night, so I thought, oh, good, it still hasn't snowed, eh? And then we woke up, and there it was all white. And I thought, oh, my goodness, we're not ready. That's what I thought. We're not ready? We're not ready. Why? I thought we would be. Well, we wanted to get more wood. And the road is so bad. It's just the whole winter ahead of us. It's going to be just terrible. It's going to be a lot harder. Yeah, everything's going to be harder. Outside. Yeah. 
It's November 7th, and winter has arrived on the same day the pioneers are scheduled to pick up some badly needed supplies. They have no choice. They must make the four-mile trip to town. The question is, how will the wagon work in this wet snow? here that Mac was saying on the uh, wheels that the wagons don't work in the winter time because they act like a, a big snowman and then the wheel picks up the snow and then it'll break off a chunk and then it becomes really rough and it can break the spokes and stuff so we're gonna try a little experiment here we're gonna bring a shovel and just hold them on and act as like a scraper or something yeah Deuce been bad lately so hopefully he'll behave if you guys aren't back in five hours, Dan will be in a panic, so come and tell us they're okay. <laughs> Frank and Tim are being tested by this first snowfall, but it's really just a rehearsal for what's coming. Frank is going to get his wish for a tough winter. A vast Arctic air mass is about to settle over the prairies and the pioneers will face the coldest December in 120 years. This early winter storm has also caught the production company by surprise. Oh, they're all they're all wrapped. Can they just be wrapped? Fine. Yeah. Okay. And that's so your, uh, your oven seals in there as yep, well. Yep. Okay. And they gave me some extra glue for it too. Okay. That's okay. the best I could do because um, they didn't have the, the wide kind uh -huh. back in the day. Okay. So use well, that for hey, starters. And do you have our winter boots? No. No. Mike was uh, going to be looking into that. Well, guess what? I know. Winter. I know. Guess it's what? snowy. I know. This is winter. I am. <laughs> and guess what? These are summer. And guess what? I have cold feet. Psychological honesty, it's a five month mental challenge. That's what it's going to be. This is just going to be trying not to go nuts for five months and, yeah. and trying to keep busy. I think it'll be the mental part of it will be probably harder than the first five months of the physical part we had, too. So the first five months were so hard, but you know what? We didn't have time to think about it. You came in from those nightmare days and you were asleep in half an hour, and you'd get up and you'd have to get right back out there. Now, all we're going to have the time to do is think. That's yeah. it. So. Oh, we have each other, though. We oh, have each other. Oh, do we ever. <laughs> <laughs> In what, 10 by 12? Yeah. Yep. I'll be singing her songs all winter. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a long winter. <laughs> Deanna earns her settler stripes. Huh? That's what she's supposed to do. Sit. The settlers solve their wagon problems. <laughs> and there's a crisis in the big cabin. <clears throat> it's quite an emotional thing to leave. Okay, I understand. And, uh... The reality is, in the 1870s, people would get like this and they would die. That would best be done if we... Join us for Pioneer Quest, a year in the real West. I don't think it's worth dying for. 
Well, they have here on two separate times. I don't care what. Okay. The International Date Line is right there, just down the trail. Okay, so you guys keep your watch at whatever you've done, change it. And Normal we'll, people. Wherever. We're just standard. Time. We'll be the, we'll be the we'll just normal. See. We'll, just we'll be see. the. Well, if we figure out lunchtime and shore time, it honestly doesn't matter if one of us changes the other one, does it? Because mm -hmm. yeah. you just gotta remember to adjust yours all the time. Yeah. And we're just always on. So it's one. It means one. You're the one that has to remember. Okay, it's not one. It's whatever. Yeah. And so, just don't tell anybody that we're on a different time schedule so that it doesn't confuse them. Okay. If if we don't change, is it easier for me to do chores in the morning? And you do do chores at night? Yes, it is, because at your time, it's later. Yes, like when it's 6.30, 7.30 for us, it's 6.30 for them. So if you did chores at 7.30, and you did chores in the evening at 6.30, then we do exactly 12 hours.